So our next match is men's singles and uh, we're going to show both of the men's singles from the bottom quarter of the draw. We're going to start uh, with the man promoted from the qualifying, Sensum Bunsak of Thailand up against Victor Axelsson and then after that we will have the 10-time former champion Lee Chong Wei against Song Wan Ho. You can see that the European champion Jano Jorgensen already safely through to the quarterfinal. I can tell you that uh, Lindan, the two-time Olympic champion against Boonsak Ponsana, well, Lindan has won the first game, 21-15, and he's 11-5 up in the second. So the men's singles, Tanon Sak Sensum Boonsak of Thailand up against Victor Axelson, Axelson the number six seed from Denmark. The left-hander, who thought he was going to have to play the qualifying, Victor but because of withdrawals of some players in the main draw, he was promoted from the qualifying draw. And here his opponent, Victor Axelson, the number six seed, the man who last week in Delhi, in the final of the India Super Series, was beaten by Kento. Momota. So, Johan de Kluck of South Africa. Oh, now that's interesting. He did that last week, actually, did Victor Axelson. I think it's very sensible. There's always a drift in any stadium. Not necessarily as pronounced as it is here. But there is always a drift. And wisely, having won the toss, Victor Axelson chooses which end he wishes to start. This man, the left-hander, he's 25 years of age. Gone up three places in the world ranking that was published earlier today to 27 has been in the top 10, has been as high as nine, as you can see, two weeks from the 31st of October 2013. He's a former quarter-finalist here, reached the quarter-final in 2010, lost out to Dane Peter Gader. And he, in the very first match, had to save a game point at 19.20 down in that second game against Lee dong Kyung of Korea. So to Victor Axelson, the number six seed, he's number six in the world. He has been one place higher. This is his fifth consecutive appearance here at the Malaysian Open, and it's the first time that he's got through the first round. The man born in Odense. So for Victor Axelson, well, that final last week, I wonder if that's taken its physical toll. He did struggle yesterday against another left-hander, Sho Sazaki. Dropping the second game, as you can see, to 15, but coming through 21-12 in 50 minutes in the decider. Now, this is the first meeting between these two players. So the introductions, yes, I'm not... Did you have your microphone on? Oh, maybe we just can't hear him very well. No. But lovely to see a female service judge from Iran. Mm, now, this is another player that shouldn't be underestimated. Tanon Sak Sansum Bun Sak. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen him on a number of occasions play really well in, in windy conditions. 
really strong attacking player, very light footed, yeah. which is also important because you can keep your balance in, in the drifty conditions and better control your shots. <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> the, the curse of the commentator. I hope they find that shuttle again. <laughs> well, just to let you know how good he has been, apart from being in the world's top ten previously, he was semi-finalist at the All England Championships three years ago, having come through the qualifying. 2013 was a very good year for him because he also won gold at the Southeast Asian Games in Myanmar. Beat Rumbaka in the final. First Thai player for 38 years to win gold in the men's singles at the Southeast Asian Games. What has happened to Rumbaka? Um, he went through uh, some serious surgery, uh, I remember reading. Uh, I'm not really sure what it was. I believe it was his knee, but yeah. mm. definitely oh. out with injury. We do wish him well. Uh, and playing, I'm not sure about that, but he would definitely have to play um, smaller tournaments. Um, yeah, ranking work his drop. way up. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little bit of um, a difficult situation, especially for the um, for the uh, singles players because they don't have the benefit of any notional ranking as we have in in the doubles, and uh, I think. That's a disadvantage uh, if you suffer uh, an injury. So do you think that badminton BWF ought to introduce a similar system to tennis where if you've been very highly ranked and you've been out with serious injury, you, you somehow maintain some sort of status to yeah. get into the top tournaments? Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what kind of system would work for badminton, but um, I think uh, it might be a good idea to look into. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. The question is, of course, how do you avoid it being exploited? Yeah. That's a good rally from uh, both players here. Six, three. Good deception. Yeah. Look how short that was. Well, one of your players was telling you I say your players, Danish <laughs> players. Danish players. <laughs> They're not your players anymore. You're not, no longer the head coach in Denmark. But one of my club players, actually, Mas yeah. Colin. Oh yes. Yeah. And he was saying that from he just couldn't hit it from one end to get it to the back of the court because no. <laughs> the drift was so bad on the court he had played. Oh dear. And I just checked uh, to see whether because I mean all this kind of drift stuff and so on it might sound a little bit fluffy for those at home watching this so is it real or what is it and, and the thing that you can see is that at this stage of the all england the uh, second day of, um, of play we had 10 matches going an hour or longer mm. now we're halfway through this second day of play here in malaysia open and we've only had one match mm. touching the hour yeah so the matches are shorter, the rallies are shorter, in my opinion, here. Yeah, that's a very good point. Service over. Nine, five. My goodness, how quick was that? <laughs> That's clinical. That's incredible. I suppose he knows that if his opponent lifts, it's likely to go long, so he might as well or, or hunt the net. Or likely to go short. Yeah. But that, that's, the, um, that's the specific skills of uh, Tanang. Like, look how quick he is backwards. He's moving backwards so fast. Oh. Yeah, while well he's turning and pointing so towards that back line, the left-hander, as if to say to himself, would have gone long. Yeah, he's looking at it. On court oh, three. it's difficult to Men tell, singles. isn't it? And now he Christine doesn't know, so yeah. why not let it fall and, and take the chance? I mean, you're so far behind in the rally, if you take it. 
Oh, lucky. Hit the net court. Oh! oh. <laughs> that was almost... Uh, that would have been our play of the day, wouldn't it? Yeah. And he didn't get it back. What a pity. Look, he sort of does a little hustle as if to try and put his opponent off, make him think he was going one way but go the other. So, a four point advantage to Victor Axelson here at the mid game interval of game number one. a super angle. Uses his height well, the tall man. Can it Jonasson, the coach? Some pole. He was a quick left hander, wasn't he? Do you remember yeah. him playing? Yeah, he was. He was. Port one twenty seconds. Port one twenty seconds. Eleven seven, play. Oh my goodness, that is brilliant. A uh, behind the back shot, played with the backhand. Look at that, and ends up winning the rally. That's incredible. your confidence when you make shots like yes. that and uh, I think a very good start for for Vic Axelson here I'm quite impressed how he moves on court and how low he can stay in his legs I mean he's he's a tall guy but um, I think all the the hard agility work that he's been doing for a mm. couple of years now is is beginning to pay off He has the advantage that he can play long from the net on this side. Oh, that's unlucky for Tanang Sak. Oh, good smash. Straight down the line. Oh, did you see the way he bent his racket as he, Victor Axelson, as he used his racket to keep his balance. Ooh. Well, there's a challenge, challenge here. I thought he touched the shuttle anyway. Challenge for out. I thought Tanon Sack touched the shuttle. Let's, I wonder if we'll see that again. Maybe not because Hawkeye has been asked to adjudicate. That's extraordinary. A good call by the line judge. Yeah. Service over. 9.40. Victor Allison, one challenge remaining. See how that's just taken by the drift. Out. Service over. No, that's his second service error. And defense of uh, Tanang Sak has been a little bit um, dodgy. 
Is that technique or is that lack of movement to his backhand uh, side? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's long. Service over. 11, 16. I don't know. We sometimes see left handers particularly struggle with their backhand side in the defense. Um, it might just be me noticing it but, mm. um, and not really being the case, but. Um, I remember some of the Danish left-handers that also struggled in the backhand side. That one, uh, former world champion Peter Rasmussen, 11. wasn't too much in defense, but when he was, the backhand side was the one to target for him from his opponent. Oh, that's well taken again. It's a couple Service of heats taken off the top of the tape. 12, 17. It's doing a, doing a good job, um, turning sack on, on this side of the court, in my opinion. Oh, well Red. taken. Yeah. Seems like um, it really can go long in that uh, left side of the court there if you give it a little height. The lift. Like that one. Yeah. It's always a little confusing when we see it from the other angle to yeah, understand the drift when we're talking about yeah, the drift. Because yeah. just explain from, from where we look down yeah. most of the time. Tanningsack is playing with the drift. The problem is that Victor also makes some mistakes on the back court, especially on, on the Tanningsack's forehand side, where um, if you lift the shuttle high, sometimes it gets sort of uh, caught by the wind and drifts out. Service over. 14, 18. Service error. 1914. Yeah, that's a good net play from uh, Big Trax. Mm -hmm. He really uh, is challenging there. We know that Tanisak has punished him a couple of times, but he's still challenging at the net, and that's, in my opinion, the mm -hmm. right strategy because you have to win the net in these conditions here. Oh, that's brilliant. What a fabulous shot. That's one of the six game points saved. Yes, it just came from nowhere. Yeah, it was brilliant. this time. Opening game to the number six seed, Victor Axelson, 21-15. Yeah, they are quick games, aren't they? I make that just yeah. about 15 minutes. I mean, I don't think we've seen one rally with two clears in it. No. Well, they've got it down as 13 minutes.
Thank you. So the players return to court. This man, Victor Axelson. Having won the opening game. 21-15. Second game, love all play. Oh, that's a good smash. My One goodness. Left. I can see your point, Steen, about the movement of Victor Axelson. It's it's much more fluent. And that probably comes from the, the strength in the legs now. Hopefully, uh, the strength and the agility and sort of feeling a little bit more comfortable in the hole, making <laughs> his first second round here in Malaysia. And, and we know that a couple of times after he's been to one of his uh, six finals yeah. in the Super Series, he's, he's been struggling in the first round after that. But um, Yeah, that's very true. But he's done better here. I think left immediately after the um, final in um, Delhi. Got on the plane immediately, and, and that's so important to to sort of gain half a day. I always think it's a bit of a dilemma, though, because, of course, he flew overnight. Yeah. So n probably not much sleep on the plane. But you're right, then he has an extra day to get used to the conditions here, whereas I travelled with the Korean team. We came on the Monday morning, got here Monday evening, so we didn't have an overnight flight, but th they missed out on training. They on missed practice. out on training. Uh, you want to buy drinks and some food supplies and so on. Mm. And you get that done late. And then all of a sudden, the tournament is already yeah. started. Yeah, because of course, Tuesday was the qualifying matches, wasn't it? So players couldn't get to train in the no. arena here. Three, two. In my opinion, um, the tournament that lies ahead of a Premier Series, whether it's a Super Series or a Grand Prix Gold, whatever it is, uh, in my opinion, they should finish on, um, on Saturday. They should have finals day on Saturday. Yeah. I agree. No, I know the BWF are discussing possibilities for the Super Series and how to move it to a, a whole new higher level. So those sort of suggestions I'm sure will be discussed. Service over. Four, three. It's a big miss here from um, Tang Sak. He's pounced on that net very well today, yeah. hasn't he, the left-hander? So, there's a certain uh, uh, height. When Wichter takes it below that height, he can make sure that Tanangsak is there at the net. Now, did my eyes deceive me, or was that a bit of sideways drift as well, perhaps? I think, I think there was some sideways yeah. drift, and, and that's what the players say, that it is very, very... Um, difficult to predict and that's the that's the worst conditions that it's unpredictable yeah well i think this stadium is a square isn't it and therefore there's bound to be a bit of swirly movement yeah. of the natural air movement there's many doors open here um, yeah that aren't really blocked by curtains as we see in, in other tournaments. And um, there's uh, rooms with air conditioning, rooms without air conditioning, and so on. So it all mm. creates yeah. these uh, drifty conditions. Good. 
Yeah, that's come back in. And things are looking good right now for Axelsen because he has managed to control his shots to the backcourt of um, Tanunsak. And that's really disturbing when you when you go to the side where you hope that the opponent can't play long, then suddenly he can actually control his shots. Oh, yeah. that's a great lift. <laughs> that's exactly how it should be. So your opponent can't jump into it, intercept it, and cannot. You do not have enough time to to move the feet. Well, I think it's Nine. important for Tanon Sack to keep his head up. Did you see his head after that rally? He looked a little bit... Yes, but I, I've seen it a number of times, and, and it's deceiving because he can play four or five really, really good rallies all of a sudden, but um, yeah, he seems like he's struggling right now. Yeah. I agree with you, Joe. A little shake of the head. He doesn't seem in panic, though. No. Not at all. He's a nice character. I had a nice chat to him a couple of years ago in India. So a six-point advantage for the number six seed here in the second game, mid-game interval. I thought last year, you know, Victor Axelsson, I think I said on one of the commentaries, I said I think he's come of age. You know, he's he's now matured into a regular uh, player that's fighting for, for titles, getting through to the latter stages of Super Series. But I guess in his own mind, he probably feels until he's actually won a Super Series title, he hasn't, I hate to use the phrase, made it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um He's doing so many things right, and, and I think perhaps he's a little bit eager to get that Super Series title, but um, as it often is, when, when you relax or when you um, when you most um, want it, it's, it's difficult. When you sort of relax a little bit and have a little injury or have a little bad preparation, then suddenly everything works out uh, to your advantage. I remember still the first Super Series here in Malaysia where Peter Geller was hospitalized for two or three days, left the hospital bed and went on to win the tournament. Yeah. So um, uh, the practice that you've already done over the last many years, it doesn't go away because you have two or three days of bad practice or none practice at all. No. It helps a little bit on your on your um, mood. Mm. The mm. relief of being able to play instead of being in a hospital bed or yeah. whatever it is. And maybe you don't put any expectations on yourself. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, of course, that year you were talking about when Peter Gator won, the very first year of the Super Seven Series, 2007. Six, fourteen. It was remarkable. Do you remember who he played in the final? No, I don't. But I remember we were joking that um, going to the Sudiaman Cup, I would knock him in the head in the <laughs> airplane so he would be <laughs> hospitalized again for a couple of days. He's just running away with us now, isn't he? Victor Axelson. But I mean, it must be like it's been Lee Chung Wei that's won the tournament ever seven, seven. since. Seven, no, Lee six, Chung Wei actually lost, um, I think, in 2007. Uh, in uh, oh, I'll have to, I'll have to check my notes. You've, you've thrown me there, Steen. <laughs> you've that's thrown good. me. 
I'll make a note in my calendar. <laughs> Peter Gaeta beat Bao Chun Lai in the Bao final. Bao Chun Lai, yeah. Final. Yeah, that's one of the great players that sort of. Um, went under the radar, right? He went under the radar. He's not remembered as, as the big player he was, in my opinion. What a fantastic player to watch. Mm. Such a skillful player. Just unlucky to be uh, playing at the same time as Lindan. Yeah. Nine, 17. Well, he more or less surrendered here in the second game, Tanang Sak. Yeah, I, I felt when I mentioned that his, his head and his reaction yeah, after yeah. a rally, and I felt, you know, he's beating up on himself and yeah, you see, look at that. The problem is when you feel it's not your day, yeah. trying to sort of get that out of your head and believe that you can still win yeah. is, well, uh, that's what champions somehow manage to do and the rest of us mere mortals can't do it. But uh, uh, that's, that's interesting because I noticed a, a tweet, I think, uh, saying uh, just not our day or my day or whatever it is. And I wonder how many players have, have actually won a match when it was not their day. Mm. Um, probably some have, but um, that, that's the one that play on Saturday and Sunday. So, so two points away from the first ever quarterfinal here at the Malaysia Super Series with Crack Wilson. match point. Make that one point away. Service over. Eleven twenty. Game. Yeah. Very good performance from Victor Axelson. 21-15, In a match lasting just under 28 minutes. Confirmation of the scoreline. Yes, a nice wave to us from Victor Axelson as he's through to the quarterfinal. Two straight games, 
So our next match is men's singles again, and we will find out who Victor Axelson will be playing in tomorrow's quarterfinal. Will it be the number two seed, the 10-time former champion Lee Chong Wei of Malaysia, or Song Man Ho of Korea? Well, as the players wait in the wings, I can tell you that uh, Steen Pedersen was absolutely right. 2007 quarter-final Lee Chong Wei, last time that he lost in this event. Well, I can tell you that Lin Dan is safely through to play against Jan Jorgensen. He won his match against Boonsak Tonsana, 21-15, 21-9. Uh, so in this a bottom half of the draw, just one quarter-final place to be decided. And it's the match we're about to watch.